inverter stopped. Anchors spot on. Full size fridge. Nope. Plugged into this cable into this mini split. Yes, the microwave is in my garage. Let's find out. Piece of cake. Gaming desktop here. I love the fact, slightly confused, this is the Anchor Solix C1000. I'm sure you're familiar with the brand Anchor and uh, they've just uh, rebranded uh, to Anchor Solix. I'm sure a lot of you have little uh, power banks and what have you uh, made by Anchor. And so all the good technology they've incorporated in those, they are now incorporating in their larger power stations. Uh, just a couple of highlights that are important to me that I like about this. Uh, first, its size is really incredible for the power it packs. This unit is 14 and a half inches wide, eight and three quarters of an inch deep, and about 10 and a half inches tall. And this is how much it weighed on my scale. 28 pounds, 11.5 ounces. Here is the original EcoFlow Delta. I do not have the Delta II. I don't know if you can see the handles on the Delta uh, stick out a little further than the anchor. And uh, it's slightly wider left to right uh, from this view versus uh, the anchor unit. In terms of height, uh, they're both extremely close to the same height. So you can see that it has six AC outlets down here. It's 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter. Lithium iron phosphate uh, battery chemistry rated to 3000 cycles. Its capacity is 1056 watt hours. So two things that I really like about this unit as well is first it's solar input. We flip it over here. Uh, you can see that that is rated to 600 watts. So that means that uh, you could uh, literally charge this in like two hours of ideal sunlight if you maxed out the, the solar panels. So that's really impressive. And then they claim that uh, this is the fastest charging unit uh, from the wall. We're going to test that. Uh, the, the claim is that it will be charged to 100%, not 80%, from 0 to 100% in 58 minutes. So we're going to test that uh, today and uh, see if that uh, holds true or not. Notice we've got two quick charge USB type A ports and then we've got two power delivery USB type C ports. Got a gorgeous display that's very bright and uh, quite easy to read, which I like. And then as far as uh, DC side, we've only got a single cigarette lighter style uh, DC port. We do have the light. One of the things I love about this light is that it has three brightness settings and no SOS in those standard ones. If you want to get to SOS, you have to push and hold and then it goes to the SOS. And then last but not least, this is expandable so you can double its capacity uh, with an extra battery, which is very convenient. Let's do a quick unboxing on this Anchor Solix C1000. There's the power station. We get a 12 volt uh, cigarette style plug uh, that goes to XT60. I do like how long this cable is, that's nice. This cable here uh, is XT60 uh, right here. And then notice that uh, we've got two more XT60s that it branches out to. Let me show that to you a little better. Here's the main XT60 that I assume plugs into the unit. And then it comes to this little thing and it then splits into two. You got two XT60 connectors here on the other end uh, that I'm guessing are so that you can parallel solar panels together. It'd be nice if these were uh, MC4, just because those are a lot more standard uh, across the board. Um, but nonetheless, that's the cable that uh, you get with the unit. Nice heavy gauge AC charging cords. There's no charging brick, which is really nice. We've got the documentation. One bonus thing I do want to comment on and it's uh, small, but makes a difference, at least to me. I love the fact that, uh, I don't know if you can see, but Anchor has 
um, included cable straps to keep your cables coiled up. I appreciate the fact that uh, Anchor thought about and included cable straps. Let's just jump into this app super fast. It's probably the cleanest interface app that uh, I've used so far. It tells you the state of charge, the temperature of the battery. It uh, tells you the amount of uh, power input you're getting. Right now we're charging from AC. Outputs, we can turn those off and on from the app here. And uh, you might have noticed when I first turned this on that uh, you can set a timer for when they will automatically shut off. So that's nice and uh, you can even customize it all the way up to nearly 24 hours. Slightly confusing the way they've got this written. Uh, I think they should change it from brightness to light, LED light, because this actually controls the LED light on the front of the unit. Here we can adjust the charging power, which is great. Unit timeout, now this is slightly confusing. From my testing, the unit timeout settings here is if you leave it powered on, when will it shut itself off? I had it set to never, but that's not for the inverter. Coming up here in the video, you're going to see uh, what I mean by the inverter. It actually was shutting off. And so uh, we had to, I had to go and, and change a setting there to make the inverter stay on longer uh, when nothing was drawing any power. Uh, here you can adjust the screen brightness, obviously, and the screen timeout. One thing I wish they would do, and hopefully this is something they can do through firmware, is add an additional option for never. Because uh, there's some of us, like me, that likes to have the screen never to time out. My particular unit shipped with the latest firmware. Uh, I did not have to immediately update the firmware out of the box. Uh, that may not be the case for everyone, but uh, I was quite surprised actually to find that uh, the unit was fully up to date uh, when it arrived. We've got the uh, Anchor Solix C1000 plugged into a gaming desktop here. We're running a gaming benchmark here at 4K resolution to really push the computer. And uh, I've got a little flashlight here so we can actually see. Uh, so I've got a big surge protector uh, back there that uh, all the computer stuff is plugged in to. And if you follow it around here, uh, it's plugged in there. If you look at the outlet uh, that's there on the wall, nothing's plugged into it. So uh, everything is running off the Anchor Solix C1000. You can see that we are pulling 532 watts. Can the Anchor Solix C1000 run a gaming desktop? Absolutely. This next test is can the Anchor Solix C1000 run this household vacuum? And uh, you can see we're just plugged in. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, power stations won't even start this, so uh, let's see what happens. Here we go. Piece of cake. You can see about uh, 1,250 watts. Can the Anchor Solix C1000 power a hot plate? Let's find out. One thousand four hundred and sixteen watts. You can hear the fans ramping up. Fans have a very low tone to them, which is nice, but uh, you certainly can hear them running and 1,423 watts. As you can see, uh, it will only last just barely over a half hour uh, and we're at 97% uh, state of charge. So, could work. Uh, certainly something uh, you wouldn't want to do a ton of uh, cooking on a hot plate like this. Can the Anchor Solix C1000 power a microwave? And yes, the microwave is in my garage. I don't use it uh, at all for uh, my own uh, food, except for testing like this. So uh, I don't want it taking up space in my kitchen. But uh, let's start it. Away it goes. 
Anger's handling it beautifully. 1,606 watts. So we'll run the microwave for about a half hour at 95% battery capacity here. All right, we've got uh, the Anchor Solix C1000 uh, outside here. And uh, we got it plugged into this cable uh, that comes up and along here and uh, up into this mini split heat pump unit. Uh, today it's warm outside, so we're going to be running this uh, in air conditioning mode. And uh, we're going to run it for an hour on the uh, Solix C1000. We're going to just see one if it can run it. I'm pretty sure it can. This is a 9000 BTU unit, obviously 120 volt uh, power. We're going to uh, see if it can run this. And then we're going to see after an hour has elapsed how much battery we have remaining. And uh, that should give us at least a general idea how long this could run the unit for. Now, air conditioning and heating applications are always a wild card because some days are warmer, some days are cooler. Air conditioners, heaters will run more or less depending on that. Take these results with a grain of salt. It's uh, in the high 70s today, uh, bright and sunny. No clouds in the sky. We do have a fairly decent heat load on the house uh, today, so it should be a pretty good uh, day to test this. All right, mini split is firing up. We're gonna start the stopwatch here. This is a very, very efficient unit. It really doesn't pull that much power, uh, which is awesome. It's one of the reasons why I love this. Uh, even better than portable room air conditioners or window units. It uh, looks like we're uh, starting out uh, at about uh, 442 watts, uh, right around there, which is great. Uh, we'll come back here in an hour and uh, check and see how much it's consumed. All right, the mini split has been running. I don't know if you can see it spinning or not, but it's just on a very low coasting speed at the moment. It's running for about an hour. You can see right here, uh, 59 minutes and 50 seconds so at the hour mark you can see that the uh, mini split is just sipping power 200 it's ramped up just a little bit now 230 total amount discharged from 100% to 67% so the anchor uh, Solix C1000 in uh, conditions like this could run a mini split heat pump on cooling mode for a little over two hours. You can see just how efficient that uh, mini split was. Is you saw there it was down into the low 100s right there. It just ever so slightly adjusts its uh, capacity to uh, meet the demand, which is awesome. We're here in the very uh, full and very squished furnace closet. I've taken the cover off my furnace so that. Uh, we can see uh, when it uh, ignites and uh, listen to it. But we're gonna test and see if the Anchor Solix C1000 can uh, run a gas furnace. Something that uh, is very important and key, and there's gonna be a, a dedicated video about this coming up, but uh, this little uh, inlet switch right here is super handy. So as you can see, this extension cord is coming and plugging into there. And uh, you can see, got the extension cord down here, which in turn is coming up and uh, plugged into the Solix C1000. So this just has a nice little plug and you can just boop, plug this in. And then this switch right here, notice it's flipped up to generator and that allows you to run your whatever load you've got connected to this switch off grid and then once the power comes back on you can just flip the switch down here to normal and uh, it gets uh, power from the grid normally and then it also acts as a service disconnect you can flip it to the middle and it's in the off position so really great uh, thing and uh, highly recommend everyone who lives in the cold area that uh, relies on a furnace to keep them warm uh, to consider getting one of these uh, so that you're not left out in the cold uh, when the power goes off next Okay, you can hear the induced draft starting up. That's pulling about 
Oh, 130, which is probably the hot surface igniter. Yes, it is. Now that it's just the induced draft, you can see that it's only pulling 60 or so watts. Okay, and then I don't know if you can hear, but uh, we've got the fan running now. With the blower running, this is a 60,000 BTU uh, furnace. The blower running here, we've got, we're pulling about 437 watts. Okay, so it's uh, settled in. Looks like we're going about uh, 400 and 48, 450 watts right there. So, doing a little quick math, if this ran continuously, and most furnaces cycle off and on, um, but uh, this power station right here uh, would give you um, just over uh, two hours of heat, continuous heat. We've got the Incrosolic C1000 plugged into a top loading washer and a gas dryer. I've got both machines plugged in. What we're first going to do is a test on the washer. And uh, just for fun, I always like to show people. If you notice there, the outlet has no plugs plugged in. I do have an electric dryer hookup, but uh, nothing's plugged in because I have a gas dryer. So, okay, uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, the washer's on the spin cycle. And uh, We've got the pump and the drum spinning all at once. And uh, you can see we're uh, just under 200 watts. Now, I didn't have the camera rolling, but I was in here when it was speeding up. And uh, as it was speeding up, I did see it uh, up as high as 300. That was the highest I saw. Um, but uh, now that it's up to speed, uh, you can see that uh, we're hovering around the 200 mark. So. Really not uh, a crazy amount of power to uh, run uh, the washer, and as you can see, we've only used 9% of the battery to do an entire heavy-duty load of wash. Can the Anchor Solix C1000 run and, more importantly, start a gas clothes dryer? Now, this is uh, a big batch of towels. They're wet. They're heavy. And uh, the hardest thing for power stations to do is get that drum spinning. The surge is uh, what usually kills these because that's a lot uh, of current needed to get that started spinning. Once it's up to speed, it uh, usually goes just fine. But uh, let's see if this power station can handle the, uh, the startup. Okay. Here we go. Oops, got to push the start button, not the off button. Mm. Overload. Did not want to start that. The Anchor Solix C1000 cannot start the dryer tumbling. It's got too much of a surge. Okay, we're going to try one more uh, test on this because uh, I did, did not try this uh, the last time around. So, I uh, got another load of wet clothes here in the dryer and uh, before I had this plug plugged into one of these outlets and this outlet here on the end I don't know if you can see but it's the surge pad uh, outlet so supposedly this handles surges potentially a little better uh, or at least uh, heavy loads so uh, we'll see if that is indeed the case and if it can start this dryer so let's uh, close it here. Everything's on, plugged in. Here we go. Nope. We are going to do our fridge test. This is my main kitchen fridge. It's a full size fridge here. And uh, as you can see, I've got uh, the cord coming out and uh, we've got it plugged into the Solix C1000. You can see we're at 100% state of charge. We're going to test and see how long it can run it. I've actually already started it, so I'm gonna start the uh, stopwatch now. This power station right here is just powering the stopwatch here and the camera. The only thing that the Anchor Solix C1000 is powering is the fridge. Now I've also hooked up this uh, kilowatt meter right here and uh, this camera. Uh, can see it. You're going to be able to see 
uh, when this shuts off. Unfortunately, the screen does not have a indefinite timeout mode, so this will turn off after about 30 minutes, uh, but we will be able to still see uh, the uh, results uh, when this uh, power meter shuts off. All fridges and uh, freezers, uh, in particular, go through a defrost cycle. And uh, anyway, so right now my fridge is starting with, uh, or I'm sorry, my freezer is starting with a defrost cycle. And I don't know if you can see, but it's saying we're pulling 360 watts. That's the most that this ever pulls. Uh, you'll see once it's done and it fires back up uh, in normal fridge mode, uh, it's actually only pulls a little over uh, 100 watts. It's all finished. It's just over 14 hours here. So that's pretty good. One important thing that uh, I need to mention here, this uh, inverter on this unit stopped outputting a few minutes into the test. So I think the fridge ran and then it shut off and it was off for a long enough period of time this timed out. So the only way I was able to get this to run the whole time was to uh, adjust in the app and I'll throw it up here on the screen and if you scroll down to the AC output you can change like a timer on it and uh, I maxed it out to nearly 24 hours and then that kept the inverter running so uh, you might have to do that uh, initially here I think it'd be a great feature for uh, Anchor Solix to add to the app maybe through a firmware update or something where you have the option of indefinitely leaving the inverter on. I know that runs the risk of completely depleting the battery um, if you forget to turn it off, but I do appreciate having at least the option to force it to stay on indefinitely. Now we're gonna do the recharge test time. Now this is uh, one of Anchor's big uh, bragging points. I believe they uh, claim a 58 minute charge from zero to 100%, not just zero to 80%. So we're gonna put that uh, to the test now. One other thing that uh, people always wanna know, um, the temperature. So I don't know if you can see that, 73.2 degree ambient air temperature right now. So that's the temperature that the battery's charging in. First, plug in the AC power. And then we need to pull up the app. And uh, we're gonna come in here and right here, AC input, we're gonna ch switch that to ultra fast charging. And we're going to start the timer. Just thought I'd let you hear the fan noise when it's charging at its max rate. It's pretty awesome that it's over 1300 watts. <laughs> that 57 minutes 22 seconds anchors spot on with uh, their 58 minute uh, claim uh, did uh, slightly better so good job uh, anchor that uh, is awesome all right everybody that uh, concludes uh, the testing uh, on this uh, unit a really nice unit uh, i really enjoyed uh, playing around with it appreciate uh, anchor sending this out to me. They did uh, provide this to me free of charge for review purposes, uh, but uh, I was able to do whatever I wanted with it and say whatever I wanted uh, about it. So I'm gonna put up on the screen here the uh, results of all the tests uh, ranked on, its, on a point system. Be sure and check out uh, down in the description, I've got a link to a spreadsheet that uh, keeps track of all the power stations I've tested. And uh, don't worry, there's more coming up. This list is gonna get uh, more comprehensive. I've got a number of uh, reviews lined up uh, and testing for uh, more power stations. Be sure and check that out. Uh, that's just there free. There to just uh, help you in uh, your decision-making uh, process and uh, hopefully helps you out. So anyway, uh, great job, Anchor. Nice uh, unit. I think you will find that uh, generally this will uh, meet or exceed the vast majority 
of your needs. All right, everyone, uh, if you like these kinds of videos, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe because we've got a lot more on tap uh, for you. We'll catch you next time.